Hello and welcome to Salford Now. I'm Grace Mealy. And I'm Jack Roberts. Coming up on today's show. Local record label Estereo are planning an expansion here at Media City. We attended the Red Bull event at Salford's new skate park. And we're joined in a studio by our political correspondent to discuss a report against Salford City Council. Our top story this evening, a report from a trade union seen exclusively by Salford Now says a lack of staff at Salford City Council is causing millions of pounds in council tax to go uncollected. Unison, the trade union which represents workers at the council, has released a highly critical report. Our reporter Cameron Gordon is here with us now. So Cameron, what exactly does the report say? Yeah, so as you said, it's, it's very critical of, um, the, of Salford City Council and it's mostly over collection of tax and staffing levels. Essentially what the report is saying is that staffing levels are, are low and, and the union's been worried about it for a while. As you would expect, it's a union is it's trying to point out the issues uh, with workers and um, they, they feel it's too low, which has led to an issue in collection of taxes. That's mostly business rates and council tax. And because there's not enough staff, the, a lot of the staff that would go out and collect that is having to help with customer service kind of roles. And it's meaning that the actual taxes, business rates and council tax, get missed and it's costing the council, they believe and they estimate, millions of pounds. And they're worried it's, it's a big deal for the workers as well that they're stressing them out. And in fact, some workers are quoted in the report, which we have here, that um, they believe the service is on its knees. And that's, that's a quote from the workers. And they are genuinely worried about the level that this is going to cause, especially because there, there is calls now for Salford City Council to reduce its, uh, its outgoings by about £16 million. And, and that is a worry when they have stories in here, um, case studies. One case study in the report is about one woman who um, had home calls from a rent officer about the rent on her home um, because they believed she was owing the council money, you know, she needed to pay them more to keep the house. But it turns out that actually they, um, she had submitted the paperwork to show she has uh, child benefits three months earlier, so should have had a reduction in housing costs. And she has three young children, and that's just one of the stories. There's many in this report. So what Thank have you. the council said in response to this? Well, the council, specifically Councillor Bill Hines, have, they've not disputed it. But they're basically just saying that they've lost a lot of money, about 54% of their funding since uh, 2010, that they have to make changes, and they're trying to make changes to go into digital age. Brilliant. Thank you, Cameron. This year, Salford Council held votes for their first Spirit of Salford Awards, a recognition of those living in Salford who go above and beyond in the community. Votes have now closed and nominations will be announced in the new year. Our reporter, Matt Ward, has been finding out more about the awards. Yes, I'm in the Salford Civic Centre in Swinton and I've just been speaking to Councillor Tracy Kelly and in her words, this is a thank you from the Mayor Paul Dennett uh, to the residents of Salford, to the community groups, to volunteers and um, this, is, like I said, is basically a thank you to those sort of people. Uh, there are several categories for these awards. There's Young Person of the Year, Community Group of the Year, Volunteer Group of the Year and um, it's been a public vote. Uh, voting has now closed. It closed on the 3rd of December. Uh, we're now just waiting on the uh, nominations to be announced in the new year. But I spoke to Councillor Tracy Kelly regarding uh, what they wish to achieve with the Salford Awards and if uh, Salford was in need of this sort of thing. Is the city in need of this sort of community cohesion? Is, is that why you brought it around? Is, is there a... I think there's always a need to bring people together. You know, communities, we, we always hear that communities are moving further apart and obviously we, we have a diverse and a range of communities within the city of Salford. And I think it's always important to bring those back together and just show. And sometimes we, we talk about the negatives of our city, but we don't talk about the positives. And there's a lot of great stuff going on in our communities. So this was a way of showcasing that really. So in your opinion, and possibly the mayor's opinion, it's, it's no more needed in Salford than it is in any other city? No, it's, it's a 
And to some people it may be seen as it's just another award ceremony, but sometimes it's difficult how to showcase that back to the citizens of, that we do recognise the hard work that everybody does within the city and how do we do that. And if it doesn't work, then we'll, we'll, it'll be lessons learned, but we're hoping that this is something that we, we think is a positive for the city. Has the response been good? It's been good, yeah. We've had a number of nominations already and we've got um, judging panels that are made up of elected representatives, some of our partners across the city, some of our volunteers across the city. So over the next few weeks, we'll be looking through those nominations and hopefully choosing our worthy winners. Finalists will be announced on the 10th of January. A Manchester-based make makeup boutique hosted a charity event just outside of Salford last night. Pout Patrol have so far raised over 7,500 for Big Change Manchester, which will go towards helping the homeless. The event featured four makeup artists from across the country who each did a mini masterclass as well as stores from different makeup brands. It was such a success that the owners of Pout Patrol are already thinking about next year's event. Yeah. So I'm already in the new year going to find another one for next year and I'm going to approach bigger makeup artists in the hope that I can secure them for next Christmas. But I think as makeup artists and people in the beauty industry, it's really great to do something like this. Yeah. Because rather than, like, we work in quite a fickle industry and it's yeah. nice to and we're all, put back. You know, like... The office for Rail and Road have opened an investigation into Northern Rail after major disruptions in Salford earlier this year. They want to find out if the operator failed to keep passengers up to date with cancellations and changes. The report also found that there were nearly 35,000 claims for compensation in June. The findings will be published early next year. The UK's first smart home energy lab was launched in Salford. The lab is based at the University of Salford's dual house and wants to provide consumers with advice about smart meters and new energy technology. An exciting week this week, Salford Winter Graduation was last night and took place at main campus in Maxwell Building. University of Salford has organised free stands of t-shirts and memorial gifts as a graduation present for the class of 2018. graduating today this is the winter grad and I'm here selling graduation t-shirts so all the graduates have got their names on the back of the t-shirt um, and then they can find the name and then they can buy it then they can we're also selling teddies and mugs as well and it's just something to remember their name by everyone's been really excited it's a bit of a puzzle so they're trying to find it so that makes them happy yeah well I think it is wonderful because it's a very nice souvenir and I think it will be a great advertisement for the university. Anybody realises that you studied here, you're a South African. What is Sean Alanan, Salford now? Media City record label Osterio plan to expand their company from 12 members of staff to 21. Our reporter Deborah has more. That's a J. Yeah. Dot. L.A. 12 months. Um, J Flowers campaign is one example of that. We're going to be releasing a lot of music next year in 2019. Um, we have another artist, Lisbeth, who's going to be dropping an EP early 2019. And it's, it's going to be a really exciting space. We're going to have photography studios, vocal recording booths, all manner of great equipment that creative people can come in. Salford City Council is waiving car park fees in the run-up to Christmas to encourage shoppers to come to the city. Throughout December, shoppers will not have to pay for parking in selected spots. Josh Kelly has more. Starting tomorrow, eight Salford car parks are dropping their charges in the run-up to Christmas. For the next three Saturdays, the car parks across Monton, Eccles, Pendleton and Swinton will allow shoppers to park free of charge. Fantastic. We're absolutely thrilled that we've got some Saturdays where people will be able to come to Monton and go into the shops and not have to pay to do that. So our initial reaction is, as far as that goes, fantastic. Thank you very much, Salford girls. 
three Saturdays is great and we don't want to knock that in anyway, but if we're really honest, we are very sad about the other 360 days a year that we've lost as a free car park. Um, there is actually one business which is closing in two weeks' time and part of the reason they put down for that is because of the lack of trade that's occurred since the car park became somewhere you had to pay to go into. This is just one of the car parks that Salford Council are allowing shoppers to park in for free in the run-up to Christmas. Businesses are hoping that this is going to lead to a boost in sales. People tend to um, come in but they're on um, a, t a half an hour um, sort of time slot so people just come in, look and go. Big places like the Trafford Centre and Walton Precinct and that, they're all free of charge and people can just park there as long as they like and uh, here it's all time restricted and uh, it can't be a bad thing if it's free all day. Salford residents have had a mixed reaction to the news. A big effect because a lot of people use the car park to come on here to do all the shopping even the elderly come on here in the cars disabled. and the disabled Eccles used to be a thriving community but now while everything shut nobody really comes they'll go to um, Trafford Centre or town which is wrong 20p is just a nuisance yeah but uh, as far as the local residents are concerned and visitors to a lesser extent, it's a good idea. With just over three weeks until the big day, motorists may only have to worry about finding a parking space rather than change the meter. Josh Kelly, Salford Now. Now Salford has a new home for fans of extreme sport. Matt, an exciting new facility has opened? That's right, Grace. A new facility in the centre of Salford is giving athletes the chance to uh, practice skills for a wide range of extreme sports. And they've even welcomed them an Olympic medalist. Grace O'Hare strapped on her knee pads and went to find out more. Whether it's skateboarding, snowboarding or skiing, the new Greystone Action Academy in Salford has facilities to suit any adrenaline seeker. Red Bull organised the event to let students try out the facility first and get tips from professional snowboarder and bronze medalist Billy Morgan. You need somewhere with like reduced risk and somewhere where you can train in a lot of different disciplines, especially when they get the area out the back, there'll be like a big gymnastics thing, all the rolling into the foam pit. You can practice any tri tricks you want in a reduced risk environment, that's basically the deal. How do you train to snowboard in a place like this? You don't, you've got, kind of got to go away. But that's the point about having this, we can do lots of skateboarding, tricks into the foam pit and all the foundations that go around the, the sport and then we go, when we go away we're more prepared. Having an Olympian like Billy around is an inspiration to young athletes. I know myself and a lot of other people on Salt Snow have like aspired up to Billy Morgan for like years. It's really cool not just to have him here but to have him like giving us tips and being able to like talk to us on a level that's not like he's an Olympian just like he's a really cool friend. When we go to Chill Factor we only really do freestyle stuff very occasionally, whereas having this literally like down the road from uni means we can run trips here like so often. It's the first of its kind in the UK, like there's nothing like this. It's not just athletes like Billy Morgan who can use the facility, it's opening to the general public at the weekend. Always every week there'll be a schedule, beginner sessions happening on a regular basis. Uh, there'll be equipment for you, helmets, pads and skateboards to use uh, and that will go for all of our activities here that you know, certainly we can give you a chance to learn. This isn't just for the elite level athletes, not for those that kind of already know how to skate. It's really, we've built this facility to get more people involved with these sports. Come down to Greystone and speak to someone and say, look, I want to try skateboarding. I'm pretty sure they'll, they'll do like times and lessons and stuff. You can get skateboard lessons. Or go and get a skateboard and go to the skate park. Find somebody you know and just get it, like, give it a go. <laughs> That's all from sports this evening. Back to you guys. Thanks, Matt. Now we go to Matthew Taylor with the weather. I'm here at Media City in Salford, and it's been a relatively bright and dry day today, which is a pleasant surprise in comparison to the weather that we've had throughout the week, which has been absolutely miserable. Going into the weekend, it's going to be the Lightways Festival here at uh, Media City. So be sure to have that light bulb moment and to put on a, a jacket because it's not going to be the brightest of weekends. 
there's going to be uh, highs of 11 degrees with patches of rain. So if I was you, I'd be sure to get yourself into a nice warm cosy pub. I certainly will. Have a nice weekend. And that's all from us for today on Salford Now. If you want to keep up with all your latest news, follow Salford Now on Facebook and Twitter. Or on our website, salfordnow.co.uk. Goodbye. We'll